They're definitely coming along for that building, aren't they? It's rather dark because I'm turning out lights and heading upstairs to go to bed. Good getting internet. I don't think I've actually said that yet today. I know I recorded a little bit, but I don't even know if I'm including that. <sighs> it's pretty late at night and I just finished up my role-playing game where we got to introduce our characters. We are all a little bit uh, unique. Uh, yeah, everything down here can be turned off. It's dark. So, um, I mentioned this uh, last week, last week today in fact, that I am playing Jacinta. Uh, she is... Yes, kitten, I know. Don't worry, I'll be joining you soon enough. Uh, one moment, let me move the mine kitty, sound kitty, back, back, back. Nope, back. <sighs> Trying to airlock cats is always fun. Um, I am playing Jacinta. Jacinta is a <sighs> legacy. She's the granddaughter of both Demeter and of Aristeus. Uh, so, wheat and bees. So, think domesticated animals, natural law, things along that nature. But um, the setting is in New York City, current day New York City, that is 2018. Uh, we're all students at NYU, and well, I mentioned this a little bit before. Let me get where the light's not terrible. There we go. Or, you know, with a kitty. Kitties always make things better. So, um, again, we're living in New York City. We're attending NYU. And for some reason, I overwrote my backstory. Really, Zone? Really? I kind of overwrote my backstory. Um, not as in overwriting, as in wrote too much. So, fine zone, I'll lay down so you can join me in the video. Okay. Yeah. He's in crazy cat hour mode. And wants attention. Um, I went to some pretty ridiculous, really can't stop bumping into the camera constantly. I went to some pretty ridiculous lengths to be accurate on my story, like looking up what majors NYU had, realizing that my character's first major wouldn't have been at NYU. Zone. Come on, stop, kitty. He's doing nothing but rubbing up against the hand that has the camera. I want you in this too, but you keep running up to the... Do you see this? Do you see what's going on here? So, um... What was I saying? Right, so obsessing over accuracy of detail, because this is a fantasy setting. It, even though it's modern day, it's still fantasy. It's Percy Jackson universe, but um, what bothered me was the idea that this is something it, I swear, I'm going to have to record this video without a cat in the room. This is just unfortunate. But he will not stop moving. Um... If something can be accurate, I like it being accurate when it comes to role-playing. So, like for instance, if I'm role-playing in a modern-day setting, I prefer to have modern-day things that are, well, not just as accurate as possible, but I will start researching into how accurate I can make things. Oh, now he's being very cute. I'm giving him scratches on his chin. I'm behind his ear. This is probably way more entertaining than my actual video, so I'll probably point out this for a while, assuming he stays still long enough. Um, anyway, so I went in and thought really hard about my backstory. My character's living in Bell Harbor, New York, which is... Ow! Sound stop nomming on my finger. So Bell Harbor, New York is a kind of a little town inside of New York City. Technically, it's a little town inside of Rockaway Beach, which is a little town inside of New York City. Um, lives in Bell Harbor. Was able to find a cheap rental for... That was hurricane damage still. Uh, got that for cheap. Attending NYU. Partially on her own dime, partially on a... 
full ride scholarship. I mean, it costs money to live in New York City, regardless of how much you're paying for school. Uh, figured out that, okay, she would not have been pre-law for her major. What major would she have been in? Well, she's interested in urban agriculture. What schools in the area have urban agriculture? I researched the crap out of this. And I think part of the reason why is that, that this character is based on a lot of people that I know. Um, friends of mine, basically, that I've known throughout the years. Um, one family member, even. And also the fact that I lived in New York City for a year and a half. And that's actually what I was trying to talk about today before Zone distracted me. Um, I don't think I've actually talked much about the time that I lived in New York City. So, I lived there from... Let's see, I was... I moved out shortly before I turned eight. That would have been June or July of whatever year that was. And I moved in, I would have been... Would have been... January of my first grade year, I would have been six. I lived there for about a year and a half. Um, almost exactly a year and a half. I lived in Bell Harbor, New York. That's part of the reason why I chose that location, because I actually do know it myself. Ow! Do you see this? He's biting me. Silly kitties. Um... Living in Bell Harbor, New York, I liked my block. I liked my friends that lived there. I knew pretty much every kid on the block, and the block was filled with kids my age. Uh, probably, I don't know. So I lived on a dead-end road. It ended basically at the Atlantic Ocean. It was a beach, beachside. Um, I knew probably about a dozen plus kids that lived on that block alone. Uh, my father only lived a couple blocks down. I could actually walk to his home. But, well, I lived in a garage. It was a converted garage. It was the garage for... It was effectively a gigantic house. Um, if this was built today, I would have called it a McMansion. Um, but the house was divided up into five or so smaller apartments because that's how they did things there. They did that for rental purposes. So they rented the house to lots of different families. Uh, my, mom lived, my mom and I lived in the garage. Uh, she didn't have a bedroom. She actually lived in the living room. Her bedroom was the living room. Um, she lived on a futon that would fold out so she could sleep at night, and then during the day, it would fold up and be the couch. I had my own bedroom. Uh, we had a really crappy bathroom. I remember we actually had to go to one ply toilet paper because that's all. Yes, it's home. Stop numbing things. Um, we had to go to one ply toilet paper because, well, that's all that was able to flush down the pipes. It was horrible. Uh, I remember that was one of the few things that my mom cheered about for moving back to Florida was finally able to use real toilet paper again. Um, I remember that the floors were wood and we occasionally got splinters on our feet because it was kind of sharp in random points. Uh, gas stove. Uh, in theory, that's actually where my pyrophobia came from, was my mom was relighting the pilot light in the stove, which is at the back of the stove for some dumb reason, and needed to be relit and fireball in the face. Uh, I don't have memory of the actual event. I My mom told me I was there, so I'm going to assume I probably blocked it out. Anyway, um... I had a little yard area, but no pets, basically. I had nobody. Um, and that was a lot of the problems that I had with New York. Like, thinking about it as an adult. As a kid, I had different problems than what I know now to be the problems that I had when I was living in New York. Um, I moved from Allenstown, New Hampshire, which was a... Very tiny town. Um, editor me, would you mind looking up to see the population of Allenstown and put it on the screen somewhere? Uh, say over there? Like, where the window's at? Thanks, editor. Uh, to New York City. Admittedly, I was living in a less dense area of New York City, but it was still New York City. Um, I went from everything being kind of quiet outside of Hunter's 
to having the freaking Concorde fly directly overhead of my house. I, I could not have had a nastier culture shock if I tried. Outside of maybe going from Allenstown, New Hampshire to, I don't know, Tokyo. Something where I would also deal with a language barrier and multiple culture, even more cultural barriers. And that was nasty. And I really felt alone when I lived in New York. Sure, I had my friends that were my age, but they weren't my friends that was living in New Hampshire. Those are the ones I, in my mind, I grew up with, even though I'd only been there for a couple of years at the time. It's still, those, those years, um, there's, there's a theory that how long a year lasts in your mind is 20 divided by your age. The age of five, a year to a five-year-old would last five or four times as long as a year would for a 20-year-old. So in my mind, that was basically most of the time I was alive. Uh, it was the most of the time that I was me, rather than just um, a memory at best, and probably nothing. So, I frequently felt alone. I went from a family with both my mom and myself, and my dad. We were all living together in New Hampshire. Uh, my parents had split up, and that was what precipitated the move to New York. My mom wanted to move back home, and that's where she grew up. Uh, so I went from having two parents to having one parent, and seeing my father... After my father moved down a few months later with the kitties, I saw Sam, at least, but that was about it. Um, so for a few months, I didn't see my dad at all, outside of a visit, I think. My memory is a little hazy back then. And then seeing him on the weekends, where I would stay with him on the weekends and we wouldn't do much because my dad lived in a basement. Uh, my dad was miserable there. I, I kind of knew that he didn't like it in New York. He wasn't exactly hiding that part, but he was trying to hide how bad it was for him. I'm trying to make sure there's a kitty in the camera. Um, he was trying to hide how bad it was for him to me. Um, after he died, I read some of his journals that he had left. It's a lot like me in that he writes like three pages of journals and then ignores the rest of the book. Anyway, um, he was practically suicidal in New York. and I can understand why. His whole life basically fell apart right before. He was still in love with my mother. He didn't see me every day. He only saw me, you know, couple times a week, basically, even though I was only a few blocks away. Anyway, New York. Um, so, part of it was school. So, Isun is currently dive-bombing my shorts that I wore yesterday. Anyway, um, part of it was school. I went to PS114Q, or Bell Harbor Elementary School. Um, coincidentally, that's the last school that I attended that has not been bulldozed. Last public school. Um, not counting, uh, college. Every other school I've attended has been bulldozed into the ground. Uh, this one just had a plane crash on top of it. Not while I was living there. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Because I'm watching Zone be a crazy cat. School was rough for me. I moved in halfway through a school year. So, bam, all of a sudden in the middle... And going from being homeschooled in New Hampshire, which was great for me, I probably advanced more in my education, education then than I have ever since, to being in a regular first grade class and basically repeating a lot of the things that I did but also the fact that the class was a lot more regimented than I was used to, it was a culture shock again. Um, on top of that, I didn't fit into any of the cliques, so I had never lived in New York City. I'd never lived in a big city at that point. The largest city I'd lived in was West Palm Beach, and that was not really in my memory, whereas New York City is huge, even just Bill Harbor. So my attitude, think like country boy moving to the big city, I wasn't really a country boy. It's not like I was a farmer or anything like that, but I wasn't used to having so many people. And the rules seemed dumb to me, to put it mildly. Yes, we will line up for a fire drill for in height order from the shortest to the tallest in double lines. One for each 
uh, one line for boys, one line for girls, and obviously we line up because the tall people burn slower, and yeah, I, I never understood that even back then, and rules for no reason bothered me. They still bother me for that matter. I'm not very good when it comes to the, why am I doing this? Because I said so. That's not the way I work. So, um, there was that. There's the fact that my school teacher, I went from mom as my teacher to a screamer as my teacher. Uh, you got, I got introduced to the concept of bullies for the first time, which is how I got to taste sand and concrete. Speaking of concrete, there was no grass in my school whatsoever. It was pavement for the quote-unquote playground. Everything was pavement or sand and dirt. I know, Zone, you want me to go to bed. I'm almost done. So, yeah, um, toward the end of my time there, my mom had asked me, and, well, as an adult, I now know that she was thinking about doing this anyway. She wouldn't have asked me otherwise, but uh, my mom had asked me if I would prefer to stay in New York City or move back to South Florida. I immediately answered, move to South Florida. That was probably a huge mistake in hindsight, because Florida was a lot worse for me than New York City was, but I didn't know that at the time. Florida was just where I had family. New York City, I had uh, one uncle, one aunt, and a grandmother. And while my nana and Uncle Bob and Uncle Greg, they were family. It's not like they were complete strangers to me or anything. My father's parents were grandma and grandpa. They were the ones that always visited me when I was a kid. They are the ones that I visited as a kid, for that matter. Uh, they were more family than my family, I guess you could say. Uh, I'm a lot more attached to my father's side of the family than my mother's side, because I know them better. And I did back then, too, even though I was living in the place of, with my mother's side of the family. Not to mention, I... My mother was working a part-time job because that's what she could do. I was in elementary school. The elementary schools would let out at 2 something p.m. My mom would have to be home to make sure that, you know, I could be let in. Being a latchkey kid at the age of six isn't exactly a great option if you can avoid it. My mom couldn't really thrive there. Not that she really thrived in South Florida, just she was never going to be able to thrive in New York City. So I'm pretty sure she knew that she needed to leave, but yeah, I'm rambling. So yeah, um, I lived in New York City for about a year and a half. I didn't like it then. There were definitely good points. I liked having friends, but I made friends everywhere I went up until becoming older. My cat's finally calmed down. I should go to sleep. Good night, Internet. I'll see you tomorrow.